Welcome in, Hardwood fans. It is episode five time. We are out here at Federal Hawking watching the Lancers take on the South Gallia Rebels, and it has been a good game so far. They gave me this nice little t-shirt to wear straight out of Stewart, but we got a lot of, sh lot of stuff coming for you on the show tonight, all right? We got new segments, we got old segments, and it all starts tonight on... Hardwood Heroes! There we go. That's why they won. That's why they won. Tonight we're bringing out a couple of new segments, but first, you know how we always begin. That's right, with the standings. And these ones are big because both girls' conferences are pretty much finalized. Now, as of this recording, a few teams have games still to be played due to cancellations, but everything at the top is set in stone. All right, so first up, looking to the Ohio, and there's been no doubt for a while, Vinton County finishes at the top, winning the conference in back-to-back -back years. But no disrespect to Alexander, who came in second with just two losses on the season, but unfortunately for them, they were both to the Lady Vikes. You know, Megs rallied late in the year to finish at third with Nelsonville, York just a game behind them in fourth. And bringing up the rear is Athens, Wilson, and River Valley. Now on to the Hawking and get a load of this. Waterford girls not only win the conference again, but they have now gone undefeated in conference play for the fifth year in a row. That's two, mark it, two graduating classes to never lose a Hawking game. Eastern had a dominating season as well, coming in at second with a 13-3 final record. And Belpre separates themselves from the pack far ahead in third, and then the rest are just separated by only two games with Southern at the bottom. Now on the boys' side of things, Trimble still holding a narrow edge over Waterford at the top. Belpre and Eastern swap spots at three and four, and Southern is right on their tail, only a head-to-head -head tiebreaker keeping them in fifth. Then South Gallia and Federal Hawking close, close behind, and Wahama and Miller finishing at the bottom. And finally, in the boys, Ohio, the Athens Bulldogs clinched the title Friday night with Al against Alexander, excuse me, with Alexander narrowly behind. A battle for third place going down to the wire between Vinton County, Megs, and Nelsonville, York, and then Wilson and River Valley sit alone at the bottom. Now we're jumping headfirst in the TVC Ohio team, starting with the Vinton County Vikings. Reporter Claire, Claire Geary keeps us in the loop with the action that happened in MacArthur. Paul, it was an exciting week in MacArthur for the girls for the Vikings basketball team. On Monday night, the Lady Vikings clinched the TVC Ohio Conference title and celebrated senior night on a satisfying win. Time and time again, sophomore Morgan Bentley rises to the occasion. At one point during the game, the team was down by, the, by, down by four points in, against the River Valley Lady Raiders. But Morgan led the way for the rest of the night with just shy of a double-double, scoring 32 points and had eight rebounds off the board. The Lady Vikings doubled the Lady Raiders with a final score of 82-41. to 41. Now you mentioned it was senior night, right? Indeed it was. Seniors Jasmine Sharp, Belle Lambert, and Kendall Fee have a special storyline. They have won three titles out of their last four years playing for the Vikings ball club. Fee's experience, however, is unique. Due to a late season ankle injury, it took her out of her final season. During the game, coach Rod Bentley decided to play her. When Fee was out on the floor, she shot and she scored. I talked to Rod to hear more about the special senior night. Three titles in four years, you know, and, and I'm proud of that. I don't think there's not too many kids ever can say that around here, you know. They had three titles in four years. All right, now, we got the girls covered, but let's talk about the boys. What's their story? Well, Paul, it's been kind of an iffy situation. In the last two weeks, the boys have only played one game. So here's what happened. Last week, we had a polar vortex roll through southeastern Ohio. And this week, it has been raining nonstop, causing flooding and transportation issues between opposing teams. All right, so just one game for the guys, but how'd they do? The Vikings traveled to Washington Courthouse where they played the Panthers, and the team fell to 38-43. to To say the least, this was a disappointing loss for the team. Miami Trace only has two wins and are at the bottom of the FAC Conference. Meanwhile, Vinton County sits just under 500 after the loss and placed fourth overall in the TVC standings. This shows that the Vikings leaders fell asleep against the Panthers. All right, so it hasn't been ideal for the Vikings as of late, but what should we expect from both teams moving forward? Moving forward, the girls start their tournament play next week on Saturday, February 16th at Wellston High School. And for the boys, to keep things positive, their incoming freshmen for next season won their eighth grade season undefeated. There we go. Gracias, Claire. De nada, Paul. And Nelsonville York wrapped up their regular season action with two TVC Ohio games. NY reporter Michael Roth joins me to discuss the end of NY's regular season. 
Paul, Nelsonville York ended up the regular season with a split. That has been a trend throughout this whole season. Nelsonville York finished the year 12 and 10 on the year and 7 and 5 in TVC Ohio action. All season, this team has been hovering around 500, and wrapping up the season above that mark is an impressive accomplishment for the Lady Buckeyes. The Lady Buckeyes beat Wellston 51 to 39 in their opening game of the week before falling to Alexander in a game where they shot four for 33 from the floor. Ooh, wow, four of 33. That sounds like a rough night for them, but what can they look forward to with their playoff push? Paul, we have a strong Roth to Roth connection and NY, they have a strong herd to herd connection. Sisters McKenzie and Haley Hurd form a strong combination and Mary Kate McCullough is a senior floor general who provides winning experience to the Lady Buckeyes. Finally, Jocelyn Heller is an attacker who can light up the scoreboard from both the inside and the outside. It sounds like they have some talent, but what is coming in the playoffs for them? NY received the sixth seed in their district and will face New Lexington in the sectional semifinal. The Panthers are 5-12 in the tough MVL. With a win over the Lady Panthers, the Lady Buckeyes would face the winner of Oak Hill and Crooksville. Both games are at Jackson High School. All right, so it sounds like it's been an interesting season for the girls, but what about the boys? Paul, the word I would use to describe the Buckeyes' regular season is progress. After last season only winning five games and one game in conference play, the Buckeyes are up to nine total wins and four in conference play. This week they added two victories with a 68-61 win over New Hope Christian. And then against River Valley, the Vikings came out and made their first four three-pointers. But the Buckeyes battled back thanks to big games from Justin Perry and Bryce Richards. Their 39-point first half was their highest of the season. Now, were they able to ride that momentum to a comfortable victory, though? It seemed like they would because NY held on to a double-digit lead for almost the entire second half. But near the end of the game, River Valley forced some turnovers with their full-court press and got some easy layups in transition to get within two points. However, NY held on for a 61-56 victory. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it turned out to be a pretty exciting game for the Buckeyes. But what's next for this team? On Tuesday night, the Nelsonville York Buckeyes will welcome Megs to Nelsonville for the Buckeyes Senior Night. That game is the Buckeyes first matchup after the playoff district bracket gets announced. Yeah, yeah, sounds like they could be hitting their stride at the best time. Thanks, Michael. And if you love your Buckeyes, then you want to check out our website. NY reporter Jay L. Curvin is a master of the pen and he's putting out good written content for your team. Oh, but don't worry to everyone else because we have talented writers covering your favorite squads as well. So go get on wub.org slash heroes. And the Alexander Lady Spartans finished the season with 20 wins, and that's not easy to achieve. Beside me now is Anthony Marino to introduce a new segment to the show, Points in the Paint. Paul, well, here's the deal. You're going to feed me a word. I'm going to use that word to describe how it applies to the Lady Spartans' incredible 20-2 and two season. All right, you know, sounds easy enough. All right, so first word, I'm going to kick it down low to you, intensity. From tip-off to last whistle, these Lady Spartans play with intensity that fuels their fast-paced physical play. Diving for loose balls, crashing on the boards, and hustling down the court to stop a fast break are just a few examples of the intensity this squad shows. What makes this team so hard to beat is they simply do not let up. All right, word number two, chemistry. Well, chemistry, Paul, let me tell you, being able to win 20 games in one season takes a group of players that are, are on the same page. Uh, the chemistry of these girls is one of the many reasons why they have so much success this season. They pick each other up and they always have each other's back. Having this chemistry boosts the player's confidence and allows them to play at a high level. One example I like to share is their passing. They're willing to make the extra pass, which makes it seems very unselfish. Yeah, definitely, Anthony, but you know, that's all the words I got for you. Now, Paul, before we move on to the boys, I just want to say congrats to head coach Jeff Grinstead, the seniors, and the rest of the Alexander Lady Spartans for a great season. Now, let's transition to the boys. On Tuesday, on Tuesday, the boys dropped their second loss in a row, but on Friday, they had a chance to get back in the win column. Yeah, they traveled to Wellston, and they came out with their ninth conference win, 59-31. to The only time that this game was close was early in the first quarter when the score was tied 4-4. to It was all Alexander after that. The Spartans held the Rockets to only 16 points in the, in the first half. Now, I heard J.K. Kearns drop 16 points. What can you tell me about his performance? This kid's a gamer. He commands the offense and is a lockdown defender. He's just a gritty Player. Now, Stone Market Servers was second in the team scoring with 10. With the Spartans having a comfortable lead, head coach Jim Kearns was able to rotate his players, get some of those reserves in the playing time, especially when it's so crucial and postseason is just fastly approaching. Now, the boys still have two games left, including senior night against Nelsonville, York this Friday. The girls will see the number one seed, and they will play the winner of Wilson versus Chesapeake on Saturday at Jackson High School. Now, that's all I got for you, Paul. Did we get any good tweets this week? Actually, Anthony, yes, we did. We've been seeing some real hot takes coming from you all on Twitter the past couple weeks. 
So if you don't know what I'm talking about, then quit missing out and go follow Hardwood Heroes on Twitter. We got all kinds of great graphics and content coming your way, so don't miss out. And as the rain fell this week, so did Waterford's opponents as they continued to plow through their schedule. Joining me now is Waterford reporter Ben Wiegopolski to talk about their stretch of dominance. Paul, did you feel the heat around campus lately? Well, it was even hotter for the Waterford girls this week. The Lady Wildcats have won the TVC Hawking again with an undefeated season for the fifth time in a row. Wow, well, when we think of Waterford Lady Wildcat basketball, I mean, we think nothing less than that. And with that being said, they are on a good track for a strong postseason run. But it wasn't just them doing the work. Head coach Jerry Close was the brains behind this operation. They showed their appreciation for Coach Close by helping him get his 300th win last Monday. Oh, it's, it means I've been here a while. Um, I've had a lot of really good kids. I mean, we've we've been successful for, for several years because of the kids that we've had. And the great kids come a lot of wins. So I've been very fortunate to be, you know, have the kids that I have to get to that goal. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of success within, within the Lady Wildcats the past week, wouldn't you say? You're exactly right. The Lady Wildcats finished very strong with the help from their senior leaders as they came out on top with three blowout wins in a row again. Topped it all off with a senior night victory. The Waterford guys on the hand are still looking to make that jump into the first place to join the girls as champs. They welcomed Eastern at home on Friday, February 8th. And Waterford came out on top with Eastern over Eastern 51-45 uh, to 45 in a back-and-forth battle with scoring run after scoring run. And both teams had a dominant game, and it was quite the test for the Wildcats as Peyton Stevens had to sit out due to an injury. Now, what is the likelihood for Waterford to still win the Hawking? Well, the Wildcats need two things to happen. They need to win out, and Trimble needs to start losing. Waterford currently sits one game behind Trimble. This was the third game they played in four days, and head coach Tom Sims talked about the impacts of that on the team and the possibility of a playoff run. Third game in four days. Getting out of here with the win, knocking those foul shots down with legs kind of shot. I'm pretty excited, and Eastern is playing really well. So I'm tickled to death with the games we've had to play this week and not having much time off. Another impressive season for both Waterford teams, and we're definitely looking forward to see how, seeing what they can do in the postseason. And we're looking forward to bringing you coverage of it as well. Thanks, Ben. Now we're going to head out to Reedsville, and coming with me is Eastern reporter Luke Steiner, who tells me the Lady Eagles were able to finish off strong at the Nest this week. Yeah, Paul, the weather was heating up early this week, and so were the Lady Eagles on senior night starting off the week. On an emotional night, the Lady Eagles showed what they got. Eastern seniors Jess Parker, Allison Bailey, and Kelsey Casto were all honored on senior night versus federal hockey. How was the team able to overcome all the emotions, though, and just play solid basketball? They struggled in the first half to pull away from the Lady Lancers and Paige Tolson, who kept Fed Hawk in the game. Eastern was successful getting the Lancers Emma Beha in foul trouble throughout the game, and that helped the Eagles take a three-point halftime lead. So what, was, what went differently for them in the second half? The Eagles put the emotions behind them and dominated the third quarter, outscoring the Lancers by 11. The Eagles were led by the seniors who combined for 37 of Eastern's 62 points in a nine-point victory. Allison Bailey put up 11 points. Jess Parker head down, held down Paige Tolson and added 12 points, while Kelsey Casto finished with 14 points and eight rebounds. These Eagles depend on their three seniors. Watch out for them coming tournament time. Yeah, definitely. But now the boys. How did they feed off the girls' success this week? Paul, the boys start, picked off right where the girls left off, fending off Wahama 37-36 to on Tuesday. The Eagles were ready to face off against the second-place Waterford Wildcats in an important TVC hockey matchup on Friday night as both teams desperately needed a win. The Eastern Eagles relied on Garrett Barringer and Isaiah Fish to carry the load offensively because of the Wildcats' defense on the Facemeyer Cousins. The Wildcats defense turned about to be, to be just a little bit too much as Waterford won 51 to 45. With the leadership that the Eagles have on this team and Fish in the Facemeyer Cousins, this team is playing their best basketball in the most important part of the season. It's not only me, it's, there's a lot of guys that chip in and do their best and it's really important for the tournaments that we all play really well. They bring it every day in practice. They do everything that I possibly ask of them. I mean, I, I couldn't ask for any better leadership right now than what we're getting. The Eagles have important matchups in the hockey next week against Southern and the leading Triple Tomcats as they look to play their best basketball going into the postseason. Yeah, it'll definitely be fun to watch the Eagles make some noise down the stretch. Thanks, Luke. Shout out all the moms in our coverage who love their kids dearly. But I know you also love some Facebook. Facebook is the easiest way for you to show off your kids on Hardwood Heroes to the whole family. So make sure you like Hardwood Heroes on Facebook and stay up to date on everything. Now it's been tough sledding in the plains for the Lady Bulldogs the past couple weeks, but Monday night left some time for reflection. Athens reporter Joey Medora joins me on desk to talk about Athens Senior Night versus Megs. 
That's right, Paul. Three seniors played their final game of McAfee Gymnasium, and they will be dearly missed from the squad next year. These seniors, number four, Emma Harder, number 32, Kaylee Stewart, and number double zero, Louie Mills, have all been playing basketball together since before they even stepped into high school their freshman year. Yeah, you gotta love it when they, they, you have chemistry like that among your seniors. Absolutely, and you can see the admiration that all the underclassmen have for these three. All three of them are starters and have been throughout their time in a Lady Bulldog uniform. Talking with them, you can just see how much they not only love playing the game together, but just love being around each other. She's my best friend, so I've been playing with her since fourth grade, and then I've played with Lily since the sixth grade, so it's kind of sad, I guess you could say, but glad I got the chance to play with all of them. All right, now let's flip it over to the boys. The Bulldogs brought home some hardware this week. I'm sorry, Paul, what'd you just call them? Uh, the, the Athens Bulldogs. Yeah, well, from here on out, you can refer to them to the T as the TBC Ohio champions, the Athens Bulldogs. Friday night, the Bulldogs were able to clinch the title with a gritty 55-51 to 51 win over Megs. Yeah, so how were they able to pull out the victory? Paul, you know what they say, defense wins championships. It was 52-51 to 51 with 11 seconds left, and Megs was looking to run an inbounds play. But Andrew Stevens reads it all the way, he gets the steal, Athens hits their free throw to take home the victory. The Bulldogs picked up their first conference title since 2015. I, I, we're a good team. Um, we played a little slow tonight to begin, but uh, I think we played a lot better than what we did tonight. And we were still able to walk away with a win tonight. So Clearly the boys are feeling confident right now, and they'll look to keep that going as they roll into the postseason. Yep, good to get that conference title, but now it's time to focus on the bigger goal. Thanks a lot, Joey. And the Lady Marauders of Megs might have found their stride the rest of the way. Megs lead reporter Joseph Hennessy joins me in... Simply put, the girls were just balling on Monday. Yeah, we might have to start calling them the Lady Warriors because they were splashing all night against Athens. This team showed what they can do to any opponent. They pushed the ball up the court, they found the open shooter, and the three ball was falling, but it all started from their defense. They finished as a team with eight steals. Four of those were from Mallory Holly alone. They made everything on offense difficult for Athens. Cassie Betzing finished with 19. Becca Pollins had five threes and ended with 17. Holly had 16. And Marissa Noble ended with 13 and hit three threes. Yeah, yeah, Megs is starting to get hot at the perfect time with playoffs. Oh, yeah, man. absolutely. And that's when you need to start playing your best basketball. Not in November or December when your athletes are getting out of their fall sport or whatever the case may be. You don't want to play your best then. You want to play it now, and that's what they're doing. And th they ended their season on a win. Yes, they did against Warren. The team consists of seven seniors, so you know they have to be happy with that ending. And now it's one and no time. Survive in advance, win or go home. And the boys got a big win over Marietta on Monday, and then on Friday, they had the upset in their grasp. Man, Friday was insane. Athens was in control of the first half, but then Weston Bear started to find his shot in the second half. Friday night was everything you want from TBC Ohio basketball. Chippy play, trash talking, high scoring players, and big play after big play. Megs led by one going into the fourth, and it really came down to that last minute of the game. Yeah, it was a back and forth all night, and then that tragic turnover from the out-of-bounds play killed yeah, them. Yeah, it did. Head coach Jeremy Hill came up with an inbound set, and it seemed routine. And you were there with me. You saw that miscommunication of some sort in Athens getting that steal. You hate to see it because they played so well against the top team. Bear finished with 20. Cooper Dars came off the bench and added in nine points. Nick Lilly contributed with eight rebounds. Um, uh, yeah, eight rebounds and six assists. But all it takes is that one play. Yeah, tough loss. But with the playoffs coming up, there are bigger things ahead of them. All right, now we're going to bring on Joey back on desk for a segment we like to call Jump Ball. Now, the Athens boys just beat Megs on Friday. But what I want you two to convince me of is which team has the better trio. Either Athens with Eli Chubb, Logan Maxfield, and Elijah Williams, or Megs with Zach Bartram, Weston Bear, and Coulter Cleland. Go. Well, first off, double Bs. Athens doesn't even have nicknames for their duos or trios, so... Bear is the best scorer in our coverage as well in terms of points per game. Bartram has been a solid point guard, being a stopper on defense, and Cleland is emerging and proving himself day by day. Yeah, too bad nicknames isn't what wins you basketball games, and that's something that these Athens seniors have been doing all season. There isn't a single defender in our coverage who can stop the quickness of Elijah Williams. He's the fastest guy in our coverage, and he has a spark every game with his pesky defense. Well, if we want to talk about quickness and athleticism, then we could bring up Weston Bear because he showed that against Athens. Cleland is physical Bartram is the leader on the team. He's always talking and communicating. He's always getting the guys to listen and focus up when they need to. Yeah, with the dependability of the seniors, Logan Maxfield and Eli Chubb, both of these guys can get hot at any moment of any game and really take it over. But the Bulldogs have guys up and down the roster that make valuable plays. And they're one of the deepest teams we have in our covers this year. Oh, same, the same. But when we're talking about the trio though, Bartram is the heartbeat of Megs. 
Weston Bear is the silent assassin of Megs, and Coulter Cleland is the future of Megs. Okay. So, well, not only do the numbers back it up, but you know these boys are putting in work by bringing home a conference championship. Might I add, uh, they took down the Marauders both times they played them this year. Just saying. Is, yeah, I know. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point, but still, I would rather trust Weston Bear to pull up and drop 25 any any given night. Yeah, so. but Joey, remember, this is this is a trio debate. This isn't a team debate. Yeah. Trio. One, two, three. Well, as a trio, they all complement each other very well, okay. and that's why, th that's why I believe and they win games. Uh, okay, okay. Well, we can all agree that these guys may have the stats, but other players on those teams step up. Darsh for Megs, Butcher for Athens. No, but seriously, Joe wins. All right, so we've been talking a lot about our student sections on social media the past few weeks. So let's see it. Send us a snap of what theme you got going on and some of the cheers you'll be using too. We want to see it all, and don't forget, it may end up on the show that coming weekend. And as the season comes to a close for the ladies in our coverage, one team has to wait just a little bit longer for the regular season to end. I have Trimble reporter Nick Veland to, to tell us about another off week for the Lady Tomcats. That's right, Paul. Both of their games got canceled this week due to rescheduled this week due to flooding in the area. Yeah, Steph Curry is known for how well he can shoot the long ball. Well, it's time for you to shoot your shot from behind the arc. This segment is called Three Pointers. All right, I'm going to tell you three different words, and then you tell me how they apply to the Lady Tomcats. You ready? Let's do it. All right, so the first word, weather. This has definitely been very impactful to the end of their season. The games were canceled last week due to the frigid cold temperatures, and they were also canceled this week because of the flooding in the area, and causing them to have an 11-day span without a game. That's a long time to go. Well, you know, that's huge. But time to step this one back, James Harden style, dependable. One player comes to mind with that one, Lakin Imler. This player, game in, game out, plays hard for the Lady Tomcats. She can splash, she can dash, she terrifies defenses. Yeah, it sounds like they have a great player to have on the Lady Tomcat squad. Now I'm finding you in the corner for this last one, history. This year's team has eight freshmen and Coach Richards, when the team photo last year, helped coach the upcoming freshmen to build the relationship and the chemistry with this team is incredible. Yeah, way to switch those threes, Nick, but now on to the guys. How'd they do this week? Well, they didn't let the snow cancellation slow them down as they picked up right where they left off and had an undefeated week. Yeah, with the season slowing down, it's the pressure of being in first place getting to them? Not at all. The Tomcats are proving themselves in physical games and hostile environments. Both of those were huge factors against them on Tuesday night. Trimble showed up to Belpre, wanting to bounce back from the last time they met with the Golden Eagles. The Tomcats were down at half, but with a solid defense, the Tomcats held Belpre to only 11 points in the second half to get the win. All right, so who's been a player that has really stood out to close out the season for them? This is a well-rounded team, so it's hard to choose, but if I had to choose one, Braden Weber. In the game against Belpre, he put up 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists. In the two games prior, he went off with 22 points in both those games. This is a big player ready for the playoffs. And T, I hope you're watching because he's Hero of the Week worthy. Yeah, sounds like it. Thanks for getting this updated, Nick. Now let's head over to Federal Hawking where as the girls finished up their season, the guys are looking to finish strong over the final couple weeks. Joining me now is Federal Hawking reporter Jared Maltrie to discuss how the two teams look to wrap things up. Paul, it's been a very up and down season for the Lady Lancers as they came into this week trying to take down Eastern. Trying to finish the season strong, FedHawk has many positives to take away from this roller coaster ride. The last three games for the Lady Lancers have been tough losses to two of the best teams in the conference and to a very strong people's squad. All right, but give them some credit, all right? Both of those games were pretty close. Who kept FedHawk in it? Well, Hannah Rose has been the leader for this Lady Lancers team. Her double-double in Monday night's matchup versus Eastern kept them in the game and tried to take down the Lady Eagles on their senior night. Paige Tolson and Emma Beha have also been very big parts in this team's offensive numbers. Their next matchup will be take place the 18th against Miller, but before that, it's tournament time and the Lady Lancers will take on Sims on Thursday and try to reach one step closer to that ring. So the girls have had some trouble towards the end of the season, but how have the boys been able to play as they look to finish their season off with a big bang? Well, Paul, it was a strong start to the week for the Lancers as they tried to bounce back off three straight losses. Coming into the game Tuesday against Miller, they looked themselves again, coming away with a 65-50 win to end the drought. This week just showed us that a little bit of a losing streak cannot hold them back. 
The defense has been the key for the Lancers the last couple of games. We talked to Federal Hawking head coach Jonathan Thompson about how these late wins prepare the Lancers for playoff time. Hopefully we can build off of it and continue going into it, into the tournaments, because I know we're, we're five games away from that, so I want to I wanna really build on that kind of thing if we can. Yeah, definitely, hopefully for the Lancers, they can build off of that. Now, a couple of guys have stepped up recently for them on offense, though. Who are those guys for them, and how have they been a big part of their offense? Well, Paul, Colin Jarvis was a big part of the Lancers' offense Monday coming off the bench, however. Jarvis would put up a solid 18 points and adding two steals to his totals. As always, Hunter Smith has been keeping the team on track with another solid 13-point performance for FedHawk. Oh, last night, the Lancers traveled to Belpre as they would fall to the Golden Eagles by a final of 62 to 56. Yeah, that's a tough one to finish it off, but Jared, let's hope both Lancer squads can finish out their seasons on a hot note. And if you're like me, then you spend way too much time watching the Baby Shark music video on YouTube. Like, like seriously, it's a problem. And that's okay, but why not take a break to watch some Hardwood Heroes content? We post game recaps, entire show episodes. You may even be watching this right now on YouTube. So that's WOUB PBS, go subscribe. Now, like we do every week, I'm gonna pump fake the three, sling it down to Jacob Murray and T. Willis in the paint to tell us about some heroic performances from this past week. Look, both of our heroes this week come from schools at the top of the TVC Hawking standings on their respective sides. Starting off on the girls' side, it was a heroic week for the Waterford Lady Wildcats' own Rachel Adams. This senior guard has continued the great winning legacy that we have seen from the Lady Wildcats over the past several seasons. She had a big senior night to finish off her incredible career at Waterford High School as well. Yeah, definitely Waterford has done their fair share of winning during her time with the team, but how does she contribute to that success? This Lady Wildcat has been gritty on the defensive end of the court, helping Waterford become one of the top defensive teams in our coverage. She is very disruptive to the opposing ball carriers on nearly every possession, helping to force turnovers. These forced turnovers lead to open looks at the other end, where Adams can capitalize on her other strengths on the offensive side. She has emerged as a deadly three-point shooter, able to space the floor for this team. Adams has become a leader on this squad that is looking to make a deep run in the tournament. Now, Jacob, if you were paying attention, I think you would have noticed that I may have gotten a nod about my Hero of the Week. I've been sleeping on this guy all season, and i got to take it back to my reporting roots and tremble. My boy's Hero of the Week is Braden Weber. If I could give an award for most improved player, I gotta go with Weber. This junior has taken his game to another level this season to become one of Trimble's top scoring threats. From an offensive standpoint, Weber is most effective off the dribble. He resembles a Harden-like slasher mentality, minus the beard of course, but he does have the left-handed shot. He'll set up his defender with a few dribble moves, put his head down, and beat his man to the rack. In the Tomcats' past four games, Weber has averaged at least 20 points. In Tuesday against Belpre, he had an 18-point outing, adding eight rebounds and five assists. I'd rank that performance right behind his 28-point game in a victory against Wofford back in January. His high motor on offense translates well into his defensive play. He's a lockdown defender who tur forces turnovers, dives for loose balls, challenges every shot attempt, and crashes the glass to run the break. And after Randy Hickson's departure last season, there was a lot of uncertainty regarding who was going to carry Trimble's scoring load. This season, however, through players like Braden Weber and Blake Guffey, Trimble's back to its winning ways and sitting near the top of the Hawking once again. Yeah, whenever you lose a guy who scores 53 points in his last game, that's hard, to, that's hard to get back from, but obviously they're doing a good job of it. And as we've seen this week, big time players step up in big crucial games. That's what being a hero of the week is all about. Thanks, guys. Now, before we go, I want to leave you with this. Kobe Bryant said, if you're afraid to fail, then you're probably going to fail. So as the playoffs loom, don't get scared. Just always remember to be heroic. <laughs>